Hey guys, Jerry here and welcome to the Formcraft intermission in Greg Tech. Now, I'll be frank with you guys, I fucked up. Basically, I recorded three episodes uh, last night of Greg Tech Formcraft. Made a lot of progress, got uh, started well and firmly on Formcraft, and all the audio was missing. So, this episode is gonna be three episodes of stuff crammed into one. I hope you guys will enjoy. So, first of all, um, silver leaf leaves, silver wood leaves. Yeah, they look nice. Um, I ended up having a bunch of these after I need to cut down silver wood, so I figured, hey, shine up the fountain. Let's move on. So, Farmcraft. The way Farmcraft works is um, you have your Farmonomicon here, which is the basis. The, it's the in-game knowledge book. It's where all the knowledge, all the descriptions of various items um, are located. So this book here is divided into a number of different sections. So you have the basic information here. You have Formaturgy, uh, Alchemy, Artifacts, Golemancy, Trahalababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
I'm thinking that we can go through the uh, the life. So if we just make a couple of lives here. So let's see here. Life there. And then we can go on to, um, let's see. Death has entropy and life. So if we had an entropy right there, we could do that definitely. Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. So we, we can, what we can do instead is we can either put a spirit here and then put a death here. And then it'll connect up to this one. Um, so yeah, let's do that. So spirit, life connects to spirit, connects to death, connects to entropy. And then we now have these research completed. So you can take the item and right click with it and you get um, the research learned. And you can now click on it here in the book and you can see, okay, this is what is made. This is what it does. So. In terms of crafting in Formcraft, you have these arcane work tables, which are basically just tables uh, that you right-click on with a wand. The first wand you make is this iron cap wooden wand. It's pretty shit, but it's decent. It's it, it gets you started. And the way you make this: two caps, a stick, and the caps are made by five iron nuggets. So easy enough. Now, when you craft, um, you get um, you can either use it as a normal crafting table, or if I just quickly pick up some stuff here. So I can better demonstrate. You can use it as an in, as a not an infusion table, but as an arcane crafting table. So as you can see here, this recipe that I'm trying to make here, I can't actually make because it's, I have insufficient Vs. Vs is the magic energy contained in the wands. And as you can see here, it needs water Vs. But uh, yeah, both of my wands are actually out of water Vs. So I'm gonna so let's go charge that up. And the way you charge this up is that you need to go out in the world and find these uh, little nodes that are floating around the place. These are aura nodes, and um, the way they work is that they, um, depending on their unique attribute and such, um, they have a, a certain charge of a magic element. And provided that they still have some charge left in them you can uh, right click on them with your wand and thus suck out the magic energy so you can see there is a node right here so let's just quickly see if i can make a little thing to stand on here like uh, you can see this one has entropy and water in it so if you just do that we can get some research points and if we start right clicking we can charge up the wand in the thing this makes the uh, aspect drain out of it and go into the wand instead. So you now have, um, I now have 30 aqua in this. So I can go back and now I can craft my recipe. So in terms of the progress I made in those three episodes, like I'm trying to really uh, condense this. Um, I have a special pair of goggles that I'll show in just a moment when I'm landing over here. These goggles of revealing um, recipe can't cl cl quite click that, but um, if I go through the Phenomenon, I can show you. Um, they're located in the Artifice section, and you need a good bit of aspects, all the different aspects. You need two Phenomenons, so you need some gold and some leather, and then you can make them. Um, what they do is basically, they function as the Phenomenon, um, to some degree, but they cover your entire field of vis vision. But they also amplify any nodes that you see, so that they're much easier to spot. So if I take my wand here, we can now make these jars. And there we go. We have some more water jars. Now, let's see here. So that's basic wand law. Um, you make a wand, you put some caps on it. The, the wand determines how much vis you can store in the wand, and the caps determine how efficient the wand is at channeling it. And there's a number of different caps here that you can research. Um, I Last time I managed to research the Great Wood 1 core and craft one of those. I also researched the Golden 1 caps, which is why I have a Gold Band and Great Wood 1 with um, capacity for up to like 50. Whereas the Iron 1 can only take 25. Now, wands um, can have a number of different focuses. And these are the ones that are up here. And these wand focuses, um, basically, foci, what they do is they determine how the energy inside the wand is being channeled out. So as you just saw, um, when I used this uh, ice wand here, I made a little bit of ice. Um, if I can actually hit here without... nope. Seems to be something in the way. There we go. It, it got on the rebound. But yeah, I can fling this in the water. 
provided that the distance is great enough apparently um, and convert the water into ice so that's pretty convenient I can also fling it at leaves to break them I can fling it at windows to break those but I don't want to do that I can also fling it at animals or mobs in order to damage and kill them so like that see which cow was it I hit it was this one bam so it's a pretty decent ranged weapon and since it's actually night time we can go out back here and just you know, take a couple of pot shots. There's a skeleton up there. Let's see if we can hit him from, from range here. Uh, just a bit short. There we go. And he's fleeing from us now. <laughs> he's hiding. He doesn't want to deal with that. So yeah. Bam. It's a pretty decent uh, range weapon. What? Is he wearing... Is that zombie actually wearing nano armor? I have mine on me. What the hell? Iron golems? What is going on here? Apparently something must have hit something on the rebound. But that guy? Seriously? What the fuck? That must be the rarest thing in the world. Holy. Holy hell. That's gonna take some, some blasting to get through. And of course he didn't drop any of it. Bloody hell. These zombies are definitely evolving. Holy shit. <laughs> That's... I've never ever seen that before. I don't like that the, uh, the iron golems now hate me. I really don't. Um, that's gonna be a, an issue. Well, I'll sort that out at some point. Like, I have so many of them. It's fine, they keep spawning new ones. So, that is basic wand lore. Like, there are different wand focuses that you can make you swap between them by hitting, holding down F. But since I only have the one, it doesn't show up. Um, if I hit Shift F, I can take it off, and then I can put it on again. And yeah, that's the basis of wands. So that's the art of, er, the formaturgy discipline. And as you can see, there's a lot more to it. Um, eventually, you can also get staffs and other things. And, yeah. Lots of fun stuff there. Now, alchemy. Alchemy is the act of transforming one type of matter into another type of matter. So, the basis of this is the Formcraft Crucible, which I have one set up over here, where there used to be a beech wood. So, the way this works is that um, you saw the aspects that I looked at before um, of various kinds. Let's just quickly have a look at it again. So, when I look, whenever I look at things um, through the thermometer, I can see exactly what it's made of. So, for instance, um, this wood is made of the wood aspect, oddly enough. This lamp here is made of some light, some me mechanism, some energy, and some um, sense aspect and the research table or entire table of course has some brains and some crafting and other stuff so yeah those are the magical aspects of stuff and through the use of alchemy I can take those aspects um, from one item and use them to create another item one example is uh, the um, what I just did I just took the um, magical essence from that jar and put into this little vial here um, one example is of um, of alchemy would be the um, the creation of the form. What's it called again? Uh, <laughs> there we go. The uh, the formium. That's the stuff. That's so easy. Why why couldn't I remember that? Anyway, the way you do this um, now. This vial here has eight. Can't you in it? Um, I think I can just nope, but trust me, it has eight per in it. It even says that. So if I fling that in here, you can see that it now shows with eight of the magic. And the recipe for formium involved four of these and the nine ingots, so it uses up four and gives me back a formium ingot which goes into my minus backpack. So let's just have a look here. Yeah, I've been making a bit of this, and just to show the recipe, probably. You have four magic inside the cauldron or crucible, you then toss in the iron ingot and bam, you get the formium. 
And the Fomium, of course, can then be used for a bunch of different stuff. Armor, um, weapons, tools, and such. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Now, the apparatus that you saw up here is a way to... Um, basically, without this apparatus here, to um, refine the essences and, you know, drag them out of the items. That's basically what this does. Um, I would have to base, uh, put in... Let's say I wanted to make something with fire. I'd put a nether rack and get maybe four pieces of fire. But I also have four stone and four earth, which I would not be able to use because I, the recipe only called for fire. So then I would have four stone and four earth left over in the crucible. Which is not a good idea because that's um, that magic energy has to be re released somehow. And that usually goes in terms of flux. Now flux won't take over entire biomes like it did in Farmcraft 2, but it will put up a ga cloud of poisonous gas, which will poison me if I stand and inhale it, so... Plus, it's also a waste of materials, so yeah. Having the uh, centrifuge, not the centrifuge, the furnace and the Olympics up here to um, separate out the essences is a pretty good idea. Uh, these are made... First you have the alchemical furnace, the crucibles, and arcane stone blocks, which are made like this shard and stone. Not too bad. And then you have some arcane Olympics, five of those, which need a bunch of iron, a bucket, a gold, a vis filter. And the vis filter is why I needed to cut down silver wood. So, yeah, easy enough. And finally, there's the alchemical construct, which we don't need just yet. We uh, Essential tubes are the stuff that carry the essential around, and you can see recipe, easy enough. Not that important, I'm, I don't want to focus on the recipes, I want to focus on the use of these items instead. Hold on. I seem, to, I seem to have a little... Like if... Basically, if the uh, resource table here got too far out in the corner of my vision, it would pop away. I know the chests do it. At some point. But, uh, meh. I can't seem to replicate it right now. Oh well. It, it was just distracting me for a moment. Uh, let us continue on to something more interesting, actually. I need to analyze the zombie brain here. There we go. So, that's the alchemy, basically. I don't think I actually, yeah, I don't. I didn't manage to probably get into artifice, so we'll leave that for a bit um, again. Basically, farmcraft, research, do the minigame, have the research points. If you don't have enough research points, you can combine them from other more basic uh, aspects, or you can, you know, go analyze more stuff in the world. You can only analyze each item one time and something has nothing and some mods especially have no support other mods have a lot of support so for instance Greg Tech, I've noticed uh, does support and most of the Greg Tech machines actually have aspects to them uh, forestry on the other hand doesn't support at all the same with industrial craft Buildcraft does reasonably well railcraft does as well um, but um, forestry and industrial craft themselves Nope. No aspects. I think extra bees might actually have some once in a while. But um, yeah, basically it's up to the mod office to um, to support these. Again, support might have been added in the 1.7 versions, I don't know yet because I haven't played those yet. But that is definitely a possibility. So you can analyze. I can't get, I can't look past the part, no. Ah oh, well. So yeah, that's the basic of Farmcraft. Now there is one more thing that I showed um, on the um, the lost footage that um, you guys haven't seen, and that is the the Farmcraft world generation thingies. Basically, Farmcraft can generate um, structures out in the world, and these structures they have some unique properties which I would like to show you guys. So I'm gonna. Pause for a bit while I go and actually find one. So I'll see you in a moment. Alright, here we are. So over here, you can see there's this little obsidian circle here. Um, it's not really just obsidian, it's actually obsidian totems, but um, yeah. Basically, this structure over here is... First of all, it's a Farmcraft thing. Like, uh, it's made by Farmcraft. And it has a chest in the middle here, which you can see has some stuff in it. 
So I'm surprised I haven't actually looted this one better, but I think I have been here looking for iridium at some point. Basically, these are some of the chests I can actually spawn iridium, so I've been haunting these um, and hunting these as well. Both ha haunting and hunting. And above these um, is a node which is sinister, as you can see here. Now, sinister nodes, um, they spawn evil monsters in the dark. Um, in particular, they spawn uh, wisps that attack you, and they spawn these giant zombies which also attack you. Sometimes, though, the, the giant zombies get stuck inside the circle, so that's fun. But, um, yeah, other times they go and attack you, and it can be quite nasty. So you can actually see the sinister in the node, because it's, you know, um, purple and has like a little black, black hole in the middle. So, yeah, this is definitely a very sinister node. Now, there is also a smaller version of this right down here. It is not really a smaller version as such, but it is a little Formcraft world generation thing. And basically it is also a sinister node. But I'm surprised this one doesn't have a um, a um, totem underneath it. Like normally these lone nodes that you find in the world actually have, um, they're embedded in the top of an obsidian totem that just stands in the world, and you can actually normally detect it very easily by this eerie biome that um, spawns around them, which has the, the darker color. As you can see, biome eerie, biome tropical shrubland, eerie. So yeah, this one appears to not have completely, um, you know, converted the land that it's on yet. But I'm also, it's also kind of unexpected to find a node that doesn't have the totem underneath it. Now, one thing that I didn't actually mention in the other episodes, but um, that I might as well mention now that I'm right here, is uh, Taint. Now, I mentioned that the flux caused by um, alchemy using raw ingredients and such won't convert biomes, and that's true. However, a tainted node will convert biome, or convert the biome around it, and several other chunks. So somewhere in this area here is a tainted node. Um, and it is spreading its influence. Quite often these tainted nodes are underground and can actually be kind of hard to find. Um, and um, yeah, they're the cause of this, you know, lovely purple taint. So, this stuff is actually not that dangerous um, per se. It's dangerous um, because you end up getting poisoned once in a while while in it you get this uh, flux taint on you. And um, it's quite unpleasant, but also they um, spawn, they can spawn, you know, certain unique um, monsters. And they can also pollute uh, monsters that come into them. So let's just see what happens to the sheep here. If he, uh, like, oh, I was fairly certain he was going to get converted because he got the clock stained on him, but um, basically they turn into a tainted version of themselves, which can be quite ominous looking. Um, they also um, attack on sight, even neutral mobs. If they get flux stained, they get aggressive. That's fun. But yeah, the longer uh, a flux bound like this is left to exist, the more blocks will actually turn into just taint and basically collapse. It's so, like entire trees will turn into crusted taint that will then collapse and fall down and there'll just be a pile of tainted goo left um, once the tree is fully converted. It's really quite un unpleasant, um, but yeah, this one seems to be rather young still, so it hasn't done a lot of damage. Um, and should a good formatage have enough, you know, um, knowledge and skill to reverse the taint, then this one would still be somewhat salvageable. But um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I am. I hope, I hope that you guys um, will bear with me that I went over this stuff a bit quickly. I'm sure we'll come back to it more in depth in further episodes, but um, as I promised in the lost footage, I'll try and limit stuff like the research minigame. I'll try and limit the worst bit of the boring crafting to, um, and do that off camera. And yeah, I think that's going to be it for now. So. If you have any questions about Farmcraft, if you have anything in particular you'd like to see, then by all means put it in the comments and I'll you know, try and get to it. But um, other than that, I'll just continue along the plan I had, provided that this footage also doesn't get corrupted. Um, so, 
Until next time, I'm Jerry, and this has been the Formcraft Intermission in Greg Tech, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye!